through the stories that define the artists playing Bonnaroo. Who are they? What are they? What will you see? The what? Which bands? This year, that matter. Yay. With Brad Steiner and Barry Corner. I saw fireworks from your house last night As the lights flickered and they failed I had it all figured out Why do I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, boy, you guys must be talking about Sweden. <laughs> the definitive sound of Sweden. First aid kit. Yeah. Welcome to the What Podcast. This is a podcast for Bonnaroovians by Bonnaroovians just two weeks away from the magical, magical opening of the gates of Bonnaroo. That's Barry Corder from the Chattanooga Times Street Press. I'm Brad Steiner from WDOD Radio Hits 96 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Barry, we are, as of right now, uh, we are eight, nine, nine days away from walking into camp. Yeah. We get there on Wednesday. Yeah. Already uh, starting to pack. I mean, Are you that, really? You've already crazy? pulled everything out? And- That's today, That's pulling today. that out, but I'm picking up the generator today. And, uh, Boy, you're a generator sure. guy. We're going generator this year, huh? We're going to try. Now, can you take a generator in GA? I don't think so, because okay. you're not supposed to take gas. Oh, good that, point. So, well, yeah. why are we doing it? Because because we can. Okay. All right, good. For the fans, yeah, if nothing sure. else. Just, yeah, because we are prissy, prissy men. Now, uh, <laughs> right. we've got a little bit of a surprise for you today. We thought that this was going to, and I, I really do think this is probably the last podcast for Bonnaroo. I think so. I don't think we're going to have the ability to get uh, anything together for next week. So we thought we'd uh, surprise you a little bit. Not only are we going to do some listener picks, we did my picks, then we did Barry's picks last week. Uh, this week we're going to do your picks. Uh, some of our listeners uh, submitted some of their picks for Bonnaroo 2018, so we're going to call them and talk to them about the bands and the shows that they really want to see. But something uh, fell into our lap earlier on last week that we couldn't say no to. Exactly. Something that we'd been trying and hoping to get from the start. Mm-hmm. And the more I listen and think, and after we've talked to them, I know that's a tough night. They're up against... They got, uh, a, they got a tough draw. They got a tough, but I, I'm betting I'm over there. Really? At least for a good while. Yeah. Okay. I really, really like them. We lucked into getting the girls from First Aid Kit, who I absolutely fell in love with at ACL Fest. They've got the sweetest, sweetest sound. They just have something unique that you just didn't know would ever come from Sweden. <laughs> and I and I hate to belabor this point because I talk about it all the time. It just does not make any sense. The no. math doesn't equate. It's uh, Sweden just off of I-65, I think. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's Laverne every, and Sweden. <laughs> it's essentially the same place outside it's of Nashville. Every bit as Nashville as anything Nashville's putting out, and yeah. I love it. And uh, so we're going to talk to uh, First Aid Kit, the girls from First Aid Kit here uh, first, and then we're going to go to some listener picks. Let's jump into it. We uh, talked to what are their names? Joanna. And Clara. And Clara, that's right. Joanna and Clara from First Aid Kit on the What Podcast. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, hello. How are you guys? We are good. We are good. This is yeah. very good. Enjoying the sunshine in Stockholm. Mm-hmm. When we started doing this show, we identified the artists that we really wanted to talk about on the air. And then we started trying to pinpoint the artists we really wanted to talk to on the air. And you guys were at the top of the mm-hmm. list because I find you guys have such an intriguing story. I love your live show so much. The way 
that you guys harmonize to me is as good as it gets in the business. And you guys do something so interesting with your harmonies. It's like you, you choose different ways to say simple words. You, yeah. you figure out very interesting ways, and phrasing is very, very important to you guys, isn't it? I think so. I mean, it's something we do um, sort of um, very intuitive to us. Yeah. Like, it's not something that we design or, like, put any real, no. real thought into it. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of comes. No. Like, that sounds like it's too easy, but it's, I don't know, it kind of is. It's true. Yeah. It's true. I'm glad he asked it that way, because... A lot of what I hear has a very Nashville, a very country sound. Nashville is two hours mm-hmm. from us. You guys are obviously not two hours from Nashville. <laughs> so how how do you how did yeah. you get that sort of? Because it very much is obviously intuitive and ingrained in you guys. So where did yeah. that come from? I think just from listening to that sort of music from a very early. I mean, not very early, but from our well, early from teenage our formative years. years. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I think there's an age like when you're around like 12 to 14 where like the music that you get into then becomes really important to you. you. Like it shapes you. Yeah. And like those songs will always be really special to you. And that's the music that we listen to at that age. And I mean, still do. And I think for us, it was just so refreshing to hear like we grew up um listening to like mostly pop um on the radio and then we heard that kind of music and it was sort of a revelation like it felt so simple and so real and um there was so much emotion in it and that was what inspired us to want to write the startling part of it is that you guys are from sweden I mean, if if it was something like from somebody in Missouri, that would make sense. (laughs) But you guys are from Sweden. I guess I've just, I didn't think it would take two very, very uh, pretty Swedish women to bring back (laughs) the steel guitar. How did you guys find American music to begin with and not like the stars of Sweden when you were a kid? You're talking about being 12 years old and you're into like Emmylou Harris type stuff and Patti Smith. Right. That's more 16, you know, angst, not 12 year olds. Yeah. Let me uh, pile on to his question. (laughs) Well, I think we're pretty premature. (laughs) Like, well, we wanted to be like older than we were. Like, we didn't like we didn't go through like the regular like sort of teen angst. Like, you did. I mean, a little bit. It was very short lived. (laughs) Um, But we were sort of like, let's be grown ups and like be serious, very fast. Although um, I will say, like, I mean, the band that we started listening to was Bright Eyes, and there's definitely a lot well, of it's emo, a lot of way. emo in that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, I think the the answer for you is the internet. I mean, the internet just m- is doesn't borders don't matter. Borders don't exist on the internet. You can find any kind of music, yeah. and we found it. You know. We just started searching for that kind of stuff. And, and to us, it was very exotic. You know, it wasn't what we... I mean, we grew up with American music, yes, but that was like Backstreet Boys and Britney Spears, you know, right. uh, which is actually written by written by Swedes, so I'm yeah. taking that back. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very exotic to us, and it didn't have, like, I think if you grow up with country, like, in America, it, it just has, to, like, a totally different kind of, like... You just, it, you just have a different attitude towards it. And for us, it was super exotic and, like interesting and i think we just like we're very objective in our way of listening to it like you know we just came from a different perspective and i think you can like tell how much we love it when you listen to our our songs like it's very genuine well yeah it's it's incredibly refreshing to because when you when you run down the list of artists from sweden there's a there's a trend avici you know leaky lee axwell and this is a lot of zara larson these are this is electronic pop and uh, the fact that you guys decided to do something so completely different is not just refreshing, but you do it really, really well, too. I, Thank you. I, I got to ask, what was the, you know, going back to Patti Smith, what was that like doing uh, Dancing Barefoot with her in the audience? It's an amazing version you guys did, but what was that like? Thank you. I mean, that song, I mean, we grew up with Patti Smith. Like, our mom is, like, the biggest Patti Smith fan in the world. Yeah. So it, it felt like, like you know really performing something from our childhood um that meant so much to us and i think that she could tell like again like i just think it's shown through like she could she could tell we were sincere and really feeling the song and i mean we were shaking so much oh, I, I was nerve-wracking it was uh. so so scary but she has this she just like exudes warmth and when she comes into a room and i think you could kind of feel that like yeah, it's Somehow, like wor- welcoming. Yeah, truly. Yeah. And I think just because we knew how much we loved that song, I mean, of course, there's a part of you that's like, oh, my God, what if she absolutely hates this? But 
but then there's also just this deep kind of feeling. Connection. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah, connection with a song where you're just like, well, I love this song, so I'm just going to sing my heart out and hopefully that will come through. She is benediction. She is addicted to thee. She is the root connection and she is connecting with you. Here I go and I don't know why I spin so ceaselessly Could it be he's taking over me? I'm dancing barefoot Hidden for spin some strange music draws me in, makes me come on like some heroine. Who, uh, who chose it and was there much debate? Was it pretty obvious from the get-go that that was the song you were going to do? We were originally going to do a song called Frederick, which yeah. is another favorite of ours. But then, like, I don't know. Well, like, no, we were playing no. both of them. And we yeah. were like, well, we really want to do Dancing Barefoot, but this other band oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. do it. And then we, we actually asked them if we could switch, and they were very kind um, and said that they that they would switch with us. So we were really happy about that. Um, yeah. We love both those songs, but Dancing Barefoot, we just felt a special connection to. Now, this is, of course, uh, primarily a, a show about Bonnaroo, the festival in, in Manchester you guys are going to play here in a couple of weeks. But you guys, after, I guess, 2010 and everything sort of, exploded for you i mean it felt like probably out of nowhere overnight you know you got jack white attention and then connor oberst etc you you go mm-hmm. on to you go on to do festivals around the world i wonder since you guys are you literally travel to every country on the planet do you see a difference between international festivals and american festivals from your perspective yeah there's definitely a difference like i think american festivals are usually very like well arranged and plans mm. like it's very nice to be an artist like the, yeah there's like a really cool artist like vip area you get to go on the golf uh trolley <laughs> yeah, like, golf, cart. golf carts all the time that. love that um i don't know we're easy to play <laughs> we're very easy Obviously. to play like good catering and golf carts okay right. <laughs> um but um <laughs> all the perks the I mean, perks of being a big time artist the perks yeah yeah well i think american audiences are really just good at i don't know like i feel like when people arrive at shows and at festivals and in, in the u.s it's, it's a really good mix of like a party but they're attentive but also yeah. like yeah like the people are attentive but also ready to party <laughs> like and that's a really nice combination and makes for a really like fun energy. Mm-hmm. It's a very responsive crowd. Yeah. And you feel like they're there with you. Yeah. And what, sometimes like at shows, you just feel like you're like working, like they're not with you. Like you're like trying to like cross this yeah. barrier, but you can't. It's like right. they're on another part of the world. Like yeah. they're there, but they're not really there. Yeah. yeah. Not in America, I would say, in general. Between, like, a club show and a festival show, do you guys prepare differently? Do you walk onto the stage with a different mindset? Are you trying to accomplish different things between a club show versus a festival show? I mean, you sort of, like, at a festival, you kind of just have to, like, roll with it because it's not as prepared. Like, you don't really know. Like, you don't have time to, like, sound check and sort of, you know, you don't really know what the crowd's going to be like because they didn't pay tickets just to see you. Mm -hmm. Um, So you kind of have to, like, just have fun with it. Like, and in a lot of ways, it's not as much, the pressure isn't on in the same way. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I think it's more relaxed. And yeah, so it's a very different mindset. And you kind of know, like, people could leave at any moment. So yeah. you have to, like, step it up to, mm. what do you think, Claire? Yeah. I think there's something quite, quite nice about playing a festival because you just, yeah, you can't care as much. Like, you just kind of have to go for it and just know that well, a lot of people probably won't have listened to your music before. And that's kind of a fun challenge, you know, to see if they'll they'll stick around or right. not and it's well just, it's, you know it's not fun to play a show if you're not well if you're it. half-assing it you yeah know, it's just we never do that honestly like right. never even if we're like so exhausted we can barely stand like we still give it our all yeah until we faint. <laughs> like, yeah yeah but i you know i think it's gotten easier for us because when we started it was just like the two of us with like an acoustic guitar and it's really hard to play festivals people would just keep talking and yeah. you know now we have a big band and we can rock out you know it's, it's a totally different thing yeah how has that how has that live show changed for you guys since you since 2010 have you that always so wanted much. because oh you guys are so intricate you have such intricate sound and you guys care so much about harmonies 
Uh, I always thought that mm-hmm. you guys would want to keep things very close and, and, and tight and small, but it sounds like it's just getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, it is getting out of hand. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, it's like once you start building up the band, it's really hard to, like, yeah. you know, scale it back. I mean, um, right but now, we still, like, it's not, like, crazy. We're a five you know? piece. You know? We're a five piece, Nothing. yeah. It's not Beyonce, like, 200 people on stage. You know? <laughs> um, but I, I think for us, it's... <laughs> I mean, the harmonies are, um, like, they're the thing that we work on, like, the least. Like, they're so just... We kind of um, take them for granted. Like, yeah. they're always there. Wow. Yeah. Mm. You know, and then, so, more just... It's just so fun. It's just so fun, like, playing with amazing... We have such a great band, and they're just wonderful people, and just the best musicians. So, it's just so wonderful to share that and mm-hmm. and to share like a diversity like in you know, songs like it's not just yeah. like us singing like prettily like with acoustic guitar it's like yeah. we're rocking out you know there's just a lot more going on yeah uh, and, but our harmonies kind of carry it all like that's yeah. like the red thread through, yeah. throughout the show going back a little bit to the nashville thing because you're going to be basically an hour away does that have any special meaning? Have you been to this part of the world? Uh, or do you ha- are you have you built in time to to see Nashville, to do Nashville, see you know any anything at all special? I mean, we love Nashville. We've been we've been um, quite a lot. I think yeah, yeah. you yeah. recorded Third Man for a while, That's didn't right. you? That's right. Yeah. Sorry, we did. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we met Jack White there. Um, we see him sometimes. Um, we've uh, yeah, I mean, we played the Ryman twice. We love right. we love that place. I mean, it's just you know. Obviously, there, you know, there's, you don't need to explain why that's the case. It's just so special, and we're just so lucky to have been able to play there. You, um, I mean, we played Bonnaroo, too, as well, right. before, so it's going to be really fun to come back. What was that first there's, Bonnaroo experience like? Sweaty. Very sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, that's the first You and me both, sister. You and me both. Yeah. yeah it'll <laughs> but, be that I mean, way again. Fun. We, yeah. I, I really love the South. I just think there's a special, oh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's unlike any musical really experience special. that I've ever, uh, I've ever been to or, or had. Uh, and I, and not an artist, so I don't know what it's like on your side, but on our side, we feel as though that you guys as a, as a community put everything that you have into the Bonnaroo show. And that's why we continue mm-hmm. to, to go 15, 16 years. Yeah. Are you guys sticking around for Bonnaroo at all? Are you going to be walking around and seeing anybody? Is there anybody that you've actually that caught your eye or ear? I mean, we'd love to. I think we will. Like, yeah. I think we did last time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I remember we saw Phosphorescent last time. They were playing on our yeah. stage later mm-hmm. on. And we love those guys. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly who's playing on our day, but I'm sure there's like tons of bands. Wait, I'm going to check out. Wait, I'm checking it out right yeah, we'll now. Yeah, let's do it together. Uh, okay. Why don't we Bonnie all just do Bear, this together? Hello. Yes, Bonnie Bear is on our day. Really? Yep. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, Bonnie Bear's got two shows. Nile Rogers. <laughs> you got two shows oh, with Bonnie so Bear. Oh, that's so cool. And here's, the, here's cool. the problem. The only problem that you guys have is that you're up against Anderson Pack. You're going to miss the Anderson Pack show. But you guys, as soon as you're done, you get Bon Iver once, and then you get Bon Iver again later on in the night. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty, and right I'm before, even more excited. Than right I was before, before you, Sylvan Esso. You guys got to be a big Sylvan Esso. Oh, yeah. I've heard I've heard them a little bit, yeah. You'll, lo- you'll yeah, love Yeah, but not a, yeah. Cool. Of course, we're, awesome. get, we're giving you picks right now. We're giving you Bonnaroo <laughs> picks. Yeah, that's good. Look, we'll, Yeah, we'll, what should we see? Let's, how about Mavis Staples earlier in the day? Yeah. Classic soul yeah. singer oh, Mavis course, Staples. Yeah. Uh, it's a good day. It's a very, very good day. You guys, uh, you guys are unlucky. And then we're starting our day with Davey, an unknown guy that we discovered because of this show. Uh, we just spun the wheel mm. one day and we said, "Hey, who's this Davey guy?" We started playing him, and now we're in love with him. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll take Aww. you we'll take you around the festival. We can uh, we can tour the festival together in a golf trolley. <laughs> Yeah, let's good. do that, please. Yeah, yeah, we're down. Just a couple of weeks yeah. away. Try and um, try and build up all the AC you can in your body. All right. Yeah, drink water. Yeah, we'll try. <laughs> we will. We will. We'll try. Oh, and by the way, they all broke right. news today, right. Barry. These girls, uh, they're so wonderful. They broke news today. They will not be doing Beyonce's stage show. Okay. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, actually, uh, Brad I know. I- it's it's so, such a disappointment. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's it's much better this way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sun shone high those few summer days Left us in a soft, wide-eyed haze It shone like gold It shone like gold But just as the moon It shall stray Some 
people I just want to hug. You know, and I think that I want to hug them, and I want to hug Paul Janeway. Yep. These are the people that I just I, I need physical affection yeah. from. I want to. I mean, that, that kind of is a good segue. Uh, this will be our last one. We'll probably do a follow up after the festival. I'd love to do a follow up. That's the plan. Maybe anyway. two or three. Follow-ups. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Paul, I've reached out, uh, and I was very, very honest that I'm being very greedy. Okay. And that we want to meet him. Sure. And hopefully we can and and speak to him. Yeah. Um, That's him calling now. (laughs) Hey, Paul. Um, But I just wanted to, this has been a lot of fun. What a surprise. I I don't know about you, but uh, everybody's been so open from Paul to to Clara and Joanna, to the listeners, to Jim. From Jim Burris from Columbia from, Records. From Columbia to Ashley Caps. Uh, it has been Moon it, Taxi, Revivalist. I mean, I I am, and I'm I'm, I'm glad you're doing this in memoriam right now. <laughs> but I, I am. When we started doing this, we thought we would just be two guys talking about Bonnaroo because we really wanted just to talk about exactly. Bonnaroo. I and I think I I probably speak for you. I'm stunned that it has been uh, as well received as it has been because I do this for a living and nothing I do is well received. <laughs> I <laughs> I do fart jokes for a living. I've never gotten the 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 love and the outpouring of support like we have in in the 12 weeks we've been doing this. I haven't gotten in 18 years of doing radio. No, no, nor have I. I think um over 12,000 uh, downloads in 64 countries last time I looked. Our, um, yeah. And Sweden? Is Sweden one of them? Sweden is definitely one they of them. They must be the girls. Yeah, like I've kid. said from the start, we're huge in Korea, <laughs> which is so weird. But, wow. but um, yeah, I and I, I don't know that it's because we've done anything spectacular. I think we obviously, a lot of people like Bonnaroo, just right. like we do. Yeah. I mean, that's the, including, you know... You, hearing Jim talk about it and Ashley talk about it and Paul talk about it. Uh, I think everything that was said was sincere. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't uh, blowing smoke I, I up feel somebody's. Like, I feel like we've been talking to our buddies. Exactly. I feel like no matter who has written us, no matter what artist has called in, no matter what industry person we've talked to, I feel like we're talking to old friends. Yeah. Like we've known each other forever. And yeah. I have to thank you for that, for listening and and making us a part of, of your Bonnaroo experience. And I hope to God that we get to be part of yours uh, coming up in the farm in a, in a week and a half. A week and a half. All right, so uh, we started with uh, Bonnaroo 365. And uh, some of the main drivers to the success of this podcast have been a, a few Twitter accounts. And, of course, the guys on Reddit, we really appreciate them. Our buddy Lord Taco has been uh, diligent in this. Um, but, uh, but the Bonnaroo 365 guy has been... Uh, Really, really championing the podcast, and so is the Bonnaroovian. So I thought we would call both uh, Brandon uh, and uh, and Kyle and talk to them about their their Bonnaroo festivities, what their plan is for the 2018. Yeah, festival. that thanks to them, uh, they're a great example of what we're talking about. I forgot to mention Mike from Relics. Oh yeah, well, yeah, I mean, he was he's great. another one like the Bonnaroovian and uh, Bonnaroo 365. He reached out to us. Yeah, within within a week and a half. Yeah, of the podcast. It was awesome. Yeah. I mean, what a what a thrill. So every. I, Everything has been really, really cool. All right, pick number one. Listener pick number one from Bonnaroo 3, at Bonnaroo 365. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up, guys? Brandon, Brad Steiner, Barry Corder, how are you? Pretty good. What about you? Oh, man, we're, awesome. doing, we're doing so well. And uh, first off, uh, <laughs> thanks for uh, chatting with us on the, uh, on the What Podcast. But uh, not, only oh, yeah, thank no you, not only thank you for chatting with us, thank you for being one of the very first and most avid pushers of the the what podcast if it wasn't for you guys like you and Bonaruvian uh we would just be two dudes talking to each other yeah. it would just be camp <laughs> <laughs> thank you a retweeter your support is very appreciated man we really do appreciate it so what are you excited about this year tell me about your festival plans well i picked out three artists to tell you guys about cuz okay. i hadn't heard them mentioned prior Really? Yeah. All right. So, tell. first off, I'm going to go with... Now, uh, by the way, this is official Bonnaroo 365 predictions, at Bonnaroo 365 on Twitter. This is big news. You're yeah, bra- this yeah, is yeah. big news, Brandon. We're getting the secret <laughs> stuff here. I got the ink pen out. <laughs> Somebody tell Reddit. <laughs> well, my first choice is going to be uh, Alex Leahy, but I heard it, hadn't heard you guys talk about it at all. She's... Uh, you know anything about Alex Oh, no. <laughs> she's Australian. She's... Got kind of like the Cardi Courtney Barnett sound going on, really? but she kind of sounds more like she grew up in the suburbs listening to like Blink One Eighty Two and All Time Low. I stayed in the shower to avoid doing some useful shit. My fingers went wrinkly and my hair had had enough of it. Oh, 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 oh.
That's uh, Friday morning on the what? Friday morning. She's on the what stage? What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, Is she a bigger deal than I think? <laughs> when I heard, when I, I first listened to her, I was like, this chick's a really big deal. But then the more that I looked around, I couldn't find like her mentioned anywhere. It's like, she's not really popular at all yet. This is crazy. It's really good. Then it's Love like it. it's like we talked about this a couple of weeks ago with the guy named Rich Brian. How does how do these people find their way to the what stage? I have no idea. <laughs> we have really tried to figure out if this is strategic on their part or it's just all they got. Oh, they're smarter than we are. <laughs> Let's go ahead. And yeah, this is definitely strategic. <laughs> I can answer at least half of that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is a this is a big this is a big surprise. That's a good one. <laughs> pick number one. Pick number two. Official pick from Bonnaroo three sixty five. Pick number two is definitely got to be Reggie Watt. Oh yeah, yeah. So we have pretty much slept on the comics this year. Uh, we tried to reach out for a couple of them, and I've said this before. I don't really know how this is gonna go. I don't really like mm-hmm. the idea of of comedians in the tents. I don't know if it's gonna. If that is how comedy is supposed to be absorbed. Frankly, what are they doing with the comedy tent? What are they doing with that space? Yeah. And it's, that air conditioning. Are they going to pump the air conditioning into the tent, I hope? <laughs> I don't know. But Reggie Watt is, okay. is a good pick because he he's so musically based. I mean, if anybody's going to work on a stage in a tent, it could be Reggie Watt. Exactly. I've seen him do like musical stuff just via his phone. Like He'll record mm-hmm. like beats into his phone. He'll track something, just some random sound in his phone. He'll track that on top of it, and then he'll sing along to it record it, and then play it back to you. It's really crazy. What the, the kid is really, really a creative genius, man. That's cool. He also just put out a uh, like an EDM album with some other guy. I can't think of his name, but it's called Wahata. No way. It's really good. You got to check it out. You got to check it out. I, I wonder if he's going to bring a, a full-fledged Conan did, one of those type of stage shows, or if he's just going to stand up there and just freewheel it. And now you've got me interested, intrigued by this Reggie Watt thing. When is Reggie playing? <laughs> Saturday morning on that 10th, I think. Okay, so I'm not sure of the time. Yeah, and again, uh, Reggie Watt only doing one show. So it's going to be a full-fledged show. This is not going to be a comedy show where they do two, three yeah. sets. That's, you're really curious about how all that's going to work. Yeah. Again, we have to figure they know what they're doing, so there's a plan. Mm-hmm. So there's Reggie Watt. And then number three. My third pick is my kind of off-the-wall pick. It's Tyler Childers. She's like the singer-songwriter country artist yeah. from Eastern Kentucky. You're the that's, second. Uh, <laughs> he grew up... Uh, he, he went to the high school in the county over from the high, uh, high school that I went to. Really? Back there, it's like really kind of close to me. Like I've seen him play like dive bars and stuff, and I've seen him come to Lexington and have like four sold out shows all weekend. Like it's pretty crazy. Really? Yeah, we got another email just this morning uh, from someone else from Kentucky recommending Tyler, and I went and listened, and I like it quite a bit. And I can't remember which one who who sent this the email, but said the same thing as you did it, that he sells out shows all over Kentucky and uh, kind of a hometown guy, and everybody's proud of him. Plus, it's yeah, really, like I'm not really a country good. guy, but I'll check it out. Well, tell me, tell yeah. me, about it, Barry, what what does he sound like? What is what am I hearing? Uh, it's deep. Uh, storytelling, uh, whiskey bar type of stuff. Is, Am I is, right? Is it I more mean, outlaw than a Sturgill Simpson? It's more dirt floor. <laughs> yeah. Stuff yeah. Sure. <laughs> is that fair? Yeah, that's definitely fair. What a that's, weird that's, way of explaining that. It's more like good. a dirt floor. <laughs> I, I know exactly what that sounds like. <laughs> it's peanut shells and dirt floor. Oh, okay. So it's an outback steakhouse. It's an out. <laughs> <laughs> Up in Pocahontas. In the cranberry glades Ain't got bars nor the charge to call her anyways My mind's a mile a minute And my thoughts to bark like hounds I focus on my breathing and the universal sound I think about my darling girl sleeping all alone I pray the stars will shoot her all the wishes she can hold There's, there's a Sturgill connection to Tyler because yep. Sturgill yep. produced his album. Yep. Mm-hmm. There you go. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 not a, that's not a bad start, Brandon. I really appreciate that, buddy. No problem, man. Uh, so what about what about you? What year is this for you? What festival is this? Uh, this will be my sixth year and my fourth year as like Bonnery 365. Yeah. And what made you want to start the Twitter page? What got that? Uh, what was that inspiration for? Well, actually, I have an Instagram account that's a whole lot larger really? that I started a whole lot longer before. Okay. And uh, I just kind of created the Twitter account just to connect more with people. Yeah. But like my originally started the Instagram 
account because I didn't have any friends that liked Bonnaroo, and I wanted some friends. Wow. <laughs> like, well, I wanted to grow my group based around that, so yeah. Well, you did. You sure as hell did that, yeah. buddy. Uh, so, where are you coming from? Where Where's home? Uh, Lexington, Kentucky. So, it's not that big, yeah. bad of a drive for you from Lexington? It's like four hours. Okay. Not bad yeah, So, I was in Nashville one day doing an industry thing, and I won't, I won't bore you with the story, but essentially, I got into an Uber, and, and the hotel was like 45 minutes away from our uh, place that the industry event was. So, we get into mm-hmm. the Uber... And we're driving, we're driving, we're driving, and of course it's 40 minutes to the hotel, so I don't think anything about it. I'm in the back seat, in the front seat, the two guys are yelling at each other, they're fighting the whole way back. I don't know why they were fighting, but they were fighting about something. He, they, he finally shuts down the argument, he says, I don't want to argue anymore, no more talking, I'm done with this conversation. I'm like, oh God, thank goodness this car ride's almost over. I look up, and, it, and as we're, we literally drive by the sign, welcome to Kentucky. <laughs> we have gone in the complete wrong direction of the hotel. 40 minutes out of the way with a with an Uber driver that want to scream at us. Nice. Yeah, there you go. That's my Kentucky Nashville story. Here you go. That's my uh, connection. <laughs> Thanks so much, Brandon. Hopefully we'll see you at the farm. Okay, sounds good. All right, Brandon. Thanks we'll talk so to much. you soon. Good picks. Thank you guys. Good picks, by the way. Thanks, man. So we got the uh, Bonnaroo 365 picks. Now let's get to the Bonnarovian. Bonnarovian, uh, another uh, famed Twitter account, at the Bonnarovian. Uh, let's get his picks now. Hey, buddy, how are you? Hello, this is Kyle. Kyle, Brad Steiner, Barry Corder, how are you? Hey, doing great. How's it going, I'm man? I'm doing great, man. We're so glad to talk to you about uh, Bonnaroo. Man, where are, you, uh, where are you coming from this year? Oh, my girlfriend and I were driving down from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. All right, Philadelphia. Very nice. What kind of drive is that like? Uh, well, we're going to break it up, actually. Okay. Uh, we're going to actually drive down the uh, Blue Ridge Parkway, so it's going to be a really scenic route. Great pick. Normally, it's like 10 to, tra- 10 to 12 hours, but it's actually going to be like a whole day for us. Good for you. That's a, that's a great idea. So, uh, how many Bonnaroo's does this make for you? Well, this will be a fourth Bonnaroo. Okay. First off, we want to say thank you so much for being such an amazing supporter. If it wasn't for you, specifically the Bonnarovian, what's your uh, Twitter handle, by the way? The Bonnarovian? Yes. Just Bonnarovian. Okay. If it, wasn't uh, for guys like, the if it wasn't for guys like you and Bonnaroo365, Brandon, I don't know how, if this podcast gets to anybody. You have been a very, very uh, loyal uh, listener, and we, we can't thank you enough for that, man. We really can't. Yeah, thanks a lot. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, yeah I so, appreciate that a lot. You know, I try and live by the Bonnarooian code as much wow. as I can on and off the farm. Good for you. That's you got to stay true, Roo. That's, <laughs> <laughs> my dude. <laughs> Give me some of your picks this year. Who who should we listen to that we haven't gone through yet? Oh, well, I told you guys I'm from Philadelphia. Okay. So I got a couple of artists on there. Um, I definitely got to go with Sheik. That's that's the one that I scored. As soon as I saw him on the on the Rue Clues, yeah. like that was my ticket. Sign, seal, deliver, send it out. You're going to do the dance thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah, I'm learning it. Uh, I have two left feet, so I'm very uncoordinated, if you know what I mean. But I'm really I'm really going to cut a rug when I get out there. Okay. But, yeah, back to my picks. All right, yep. uh, Thursday, definitely going to go with the Philly native, Ron Gallo. Absolutely. Hey, the so, kid can rock and roll. Man, awesome. I can't I can't tell you how, how excited I am for Ron Gallo. And I feel, like, uh, I feel like I'm showing him off to my camp. And uh, I think that they're all going to thank me after the festival is over. He's going to be one of these that's going to make you look a lot smarter to all your friends and family like hey by the way you need to go see Ron Gallo you don't know who he is but trust me on this one yeah, I can't great. wait for that show what else you got a Friday I'm actually going to go with the wild card I'm not going to the Muse set I'm actually going back to the campground for a little cinema to check out the dark side of Oz now this is not something that we have talked about you know we we, tink- we tinker talking about the pod stuff and what you can do inside the campsites and, and various pod activities the one that is dedicated just to Nashville but I don't know anything about dark side of Oz in Plaza 3 11 o'clock tell me about it growing up I was very fortunate to listen to a lot of classic rock and roll so this is inspired by the Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon album, and they're going to sync it up with the beautiful Judy Garland in The Wizard of Oz. Okay. It should be a, it should be a trip. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. But they're doing all kinds of cinema in that plaza throughout the uh, weekend. There's a David Bowie thing they're doing too, aren't they? Yeah, I believe so. And I think the Calliope stage is going to play Elf. I'd love to see Will Ferrell <laughs> on the farm. <laughs> Why in the world are they playing Elf? <laughs> I have no clue. I would like to see it in the Christmas barn. I think that'd be pretty good. That would be that'd that would be, be really good. sweet. That'd be good. All right, that's a that's a very interesting Friday pick. Let's go to Saturday. Saturday, I'm actually gonna go with another activity. Wow. After Brockhampton, I have to run back to my Bonnaroo locker and grab my robe for the robe rage at three in the morning in the Christmas barn, Snake and Jake's. 
<laughs> All right. Now, is this something they've done before, or is this brand new? Yes, yeah, so this is uh, fairly new, but it's uh, kind of a secret set. Not too many people know about it. It's very unique. I'm very festive. I love Christmas, you know. So uh, it was just one thing that I had on my Bonnaroo bucket list that I had to check off, and I thought that I could get it done okay. on Saturday. All right, so at 3 o'clock in the morning, you're going to go to the snake, the, 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 the Jake and, or the Christmas barn, in a robe. Wow. Yep. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. I'll, I'll have a. I'll have some uh, shorts and t-shirt on above that. But if you don't have a robe, you can't get in. No if ands or buts about it. I don't care if you're wearing a Christmas cloth hat. I don't care if you're bad Santa. Okay. I don't care if you're Saint Nicholas. You can't get in unless you have a robe. Barry, oh, we need to do this. That's hardcore. We've never. I, you know what? And now that I think about it, I'm such a loser. I've never done one of these activities before. No, I don't we haven't think even I done the silent either. disco we done for silent Christ's disco. sake. I know. I think we got to go robe party. All right, I need three to o'clock a, in the morning. Which robe? My leopard skin or the uh, whichever one's skin tight, <laughs> the, the tightest one. And then finally on Sunday, let's uh, let's wrap up your sun, your festival on Sunday. I'm actually just gonna play it by ear. Okay, nothing too eventful. Definitely repeat, repeat on the Who stage. Yeah, this yeah. is a this gonna is a gonna check out the fine. Who Cafe. Yeah, this is a, a very thing. fine tune. Yeah. Repeat, repeat. Uh, the more I listen to him, I I sort of like this. It's it's a little poppy for me, but I, I'll give him a shot. I mean, I can give him 20 minutes. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm glad you brought it up because I wanted to apologize for, to Jared for saying something ugly last week. I shouldn't have. So. You, you called him ugly. I, I called him on a track. You called him ugly. <laughs> you called somebody you don't even know. I saw a bad picture. Yeah. <laughs> Music is awesome. I love it. I'm glad you picked him. I'm, if that's him, yeah, I don't know what the, the hell picture you're I saw, he that looked is one like pretty he man. Came out I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> Nashville's own surf candy. Repeat, repeat. Man, Bonnaruvian, we can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for your support, and I can't wait to meet you on the farm. Yeah, thanks for your time, man. I'll see you guys. I'll probably see you guys on Saturday. Or No, what set did you say you're going to be at on Sunday morning? Davey. 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 But let's, Sounds good. But I'm sure, I'm sure we'll find you at Ron Gallo. I'll be in the leopard yep, skin actually, road, man. I'll be easy to find. I would like to formally invent you guys to one of the events that I'm hosting on Friday. What is it? Okay, well, this was actually a stroke of drunken genius. Okay. Back in January, I applied to beat to attempt the Guinness Book of the Guinness Book of World Records most high fives in 60 minutes. Wow. Back in 2015, 8-year-old Bonnaruvian Squish set the record. However, in 2016, a passionate high fiver in India broke the record. So, I'm taking it it is my obligation to bring the title home and back to the farm. Y- you're you're out you're setting out to break an 8-year-old's heart. No, 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 no. <laughs> His record was broken in 2016, oh, okay. so I'm bringing the title okay. back to the United All States right. and when, back to its homeland when and where? on the farm. When and where? Let's do uh, it. This will be in between 1 and 3 o'clock. I'll be at the arch. I'll be at the entrance just waiting for Bonnaruvian. It's but, yeah, it's, it's a whole ordeal. I have to document the whole thing and get footage of every high five. It'll be exhausting. Every high five has to be above my head. My arms are going to fall off from exhaustion. Dude, we will be one What's of the number. We will be there. Yeah, how many you got to get? <laughs> uh, 2,415. All right, we'll, we'll be number 14 so it's and like, 15. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So it averages out a little bit little bit less than one a second. Okay. We can I think do we this. can get it done. We, we can do it, man. Hey, thanks for your time, wait. man. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the farm. Happy Roo. I think it's really cool that their picks, well thought out, mm-hmm. obviously, as you'd expect from those mm-hmm. guys. But they went, especially uh, Bonnarubian yeah. did with the, uh, with the... With the robe party. Yeah. I want to do the robe party. The robe party yeah. is unbelievable. I, I just, and I said this to him just a second ago, I have blown it on the events around the festival. I've totally blown it. Yeah, I, I, I don't, walk around them all the time. <laughs> I, I know, and they just go in one ear and out the other because I'm so hyper-focused on surviving. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I'm such, I'm so prissy, and I'm such a diva. I can't, like, the heat really gets to me, and the dirt really gets to me, and I just need to go shower six or seven times a day. I, I miss the really fun stuff that makes yeah. it so unique, and yeah, that and really it, stinks, and I want to change that this year. for us, I think part of, and this is, again, those first world problems, but because our camp is maybe a little closer than say that that poor guy who's way way out right it's relatively easy to go back and forth right so when it is hot i'll wonder i'll sit in camp and think i can't be sitting here i'm at bonnaroo right and i'll go out in center room and, <laughs> and you'll think, say man there's beer back at <laughs> i can't be sitting here as bonnaroo and then we get to bonnaroo he's like well i can't be a bonnaroo i gotta go back and sit <laughs> I down go sit down where it's cooler and there's a beer <laughs> So it's constant back and forth. Back yeah, and forth. well, I, I want to change a little bit of th- this year. And, and because of the listeners and because of everything that Bonnaroo has done and changed from pod to pod, 
the GA activities are out of this world. I cannot believe, I can't wrap my head around them. It's it's a very different world than when I accidentally, I was in GA one year, and I accidentally, this is 15 years ago, I accidentally took a wrong turn, and I found myself next to a car that was on fire and a guy peeing off of the top of an RV. <laughs> so, just a tad different than Was he trying to days. put the fire out? <laughs> It was the hose wasn't working as well, if you know what I mean. Uh, so, who's the next listener we're calling there, Barry Quarter? Let's call Parker Reed. Parker Reed, all right. Hello, Parker Reed, Brad Steiner, Barry Quarter from the What Podcast. How are you, buddy? Hey, great. Welcome, welcome no to the What Podcast. Thanks so much for listening and supporting this this dumb little venture of ours. We uh, we cannot wait for Bonnaroo. Literally a week and a half. What's your uh, what's your festivities like this year? Where are you coming from? This year, I'm coming from Des Moines, Iowa. Oh wow, that's oh, a drive. Wow, that is a drive. Wow. How long is that going to mm-hmm. take you? It takes about uh, depending on how lucky we get. First year, it took us about 13 hours. Last year, it took us nine. So I don't know how that works. Interesting. So what, what, what's your route? Who do, what cities do you go through? Well, uh, we go through St. Louis, uh, and we usually go through um, Metropolis, Illinois, so we can see the big Superman. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, many, uh, how many people are you bringing? Uh, this year, um, one other f- for sure, and then we have one person on the fence, and I'm telling him he has to make up his mind within so, the next couple of days. So this is what I always wonder about somebody who's traveling a, a great distance, because most of the time that we think about the Bonnaroo, we think of you know us in Chattanooga or somebody in Nashville or in a, in a in a small distance, but how do you pack all the stuff that you need coming 13 hours away? Because I I have to have extra people bring things for me. You know, I've got such a big... I, I'm so needy and I'm so desperate to have creature comforts from the house. How in the world do you fit it all into a car? What are you driving? Great question. Uh, the first three years, this will be my fourth coming up, and we drove a big uh, Chevy Tahoe, you know, so it Good has a crap ton of room in the back. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, this year this year it's only me and one other person, so I think we're going to take a sedan. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say like a, you know, Chevy Volt. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, thanks. It's tough for me because I've got a tiny little GTI. And I've got to rely on Barry to carry all my gear. Barry, can you, can you carry everything for it's me? True. I have the truck. Yeah, I need, I need, I need my 600 square feet of carpeting. I need my 10 by 20 wedding tent. I need everybody's giant cartoon head on a stick. We need our lit marquee that we pull. I mean, I can't fit that in my GT. I, I need hair product. For Parker, that. Uh, Parker, one year and this is no joke. Uh, I thought he and his wife were gonna fight over a hula hoop. <laughs> She didn't need that hula hoop. That was the last thing, and he was not sure it would fit. There was no more space. I could not fit a hula hoop into the car. Yeah, so we almost, she almost didn't make that trip. Barry, the hula hoop almost took her place. That's true. <laughs> All right, it Bart. also helps with multiple years. The yeah, first yeah, year, you, know, you don't know what's exactly to bring, and you're right. it every right. year. You learn what you really need. And what you? what do you what are those essential things for you now that you've been at, doing it four years? Oh God. Uh, our camp is not anywhere nearly as refined as Camp Nut Butter. I know, it's stupid. But, uh, <laughs> uh, so we're kind of boring. Uh, we bring bags. Um, you know, we bring a big uh, stereo speaker or whatever. Right. So not a bunch of fun stuff. We just like listening to Radio Roo and drinking some beers, I guess. I tell you, what, what I, I was reading Reddit, and somebody said this on one of the threads, and I don't know why I didn't think about it before. Why am I not just putting up a pop-up tent and sleeping on a cot under the pop-up tent? Because the, the regular <laughs> tents hold so much heat, yeah. and you're dying by 7.30 in the morning. It's so much more refreshing. Just to, I mean, what, who needs privacy? At this point, what do you what do you really care? Yeah, modesty's out the. You forget after it. After about Thursday afternoon, <laughs> who cares anymore? <laughs> Having done it a few years, we talked about this just the other day. There's plenty of food there. There's plenty of water and drink so yeah i don't even know, bring food anymore we were pan- yeah i was panicked about having enough and now oh my like, god eh. the first the first year you always bring food to grill <laughs> who is grilling up food like there's, there's somebody at our camp made eggs one one year oh yeah it was amazing but i ain't Benedict, i even. ain't doing that i ain't bringing the grill i'm not bringing the george foreman i forgot about that. yeah i'd love to go through some of your your picks for the uh, festival uh, you've been there four years i want to hear the best show that you've ever seen at bonnaroo in those four years Oh, wow. Well, I think LCD Sound System is a for sure standout. Me too. Me too, Parker. Um, One of the great highlights of my last, life. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, last year, Portugal the Man, Late Night, was pretty insane. Yeah. I, I, then, do, um, I do love that show because it was the precursor to them having maybe the greatest year of their career. Mm-hmm. And they've been on the farm mm-hmm. like five times. Yeah. And they started in the Miller Light Lounge. You know, a few months after that, they have a number one single at Top 40 Radio. That just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> Just doesn't happen. 
at all. And yeah, I got a chance to see them in Iowa, and I think they're coming back. So for you, they got yeah. me for life. What are some of your picks this year? Let's uh, let's hear who Parker's seeing. Okay, this year, um, one thing that I think the entire community is sleeping on is Paramore. To be honest. Hmm. Interesting. Um, do tell, you know, Parker. I, do tell. I just, okay, so I think a lot of the people are viewing them as kind of a middle school-ish emo pick. But, I mean, their last album that they just put out last year is this great new wave-inspired pop album that, uh, you know, very critically regarded. And it's won over a lot of fans. And that's it, mostly got, what they play a... in their set these days. It's got an 80s vibe to it, right? It's got this very like classic mm-hmm. 80s, like you said, new wave sound to it. It's a very different, very different departure for them. So I think people will go expecting just to hear uh, Misery Business or something, and I think they'll be delightfully surprised by the variety that they come. They have some new doubt uh, or no doubt, like inspired tracks and stuff like that. All right, I'm not, I'm not gonna argue uh, with you. It's, it's not on my list, that's for sure. I work in Top 40 Radio. I'm about paramoured out, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, besides that, um, everything, every Everything is playing, uh, I think, that tent on Friday, right before Japanese breakfast. And these guys are from across the pond, and they're as if Alt-J rocked a little harder and didn't have quite as zany vocals. I'm pretty I, excited for them. Okay, so so I keep coming back to everything, everything. Uh, every time I go through the, the list and the schedule about things that I may or may not have missed, everything, everything always comes back. Yeah. And and I don't know why because I know nothing about them, but I hear people like you talking about them every time we we bring this topic up. So I must be I must have missed something in this. Something has gone right by me. Uh, I don't know. The first couple of times I heard them pop up on my playlist, I was kind of polarized and didn't dig it that much. But I think that'll be a really fun set to see right before Japanese breakfast chills out. So what, what do you got on set? Yeah, that's that's really early. You're right. That's 1.30 in the afternoon uh, on that tent. And then, yeah, right before Japanese breakfast. I don't know. That's going to be tough. <laughs> that's going to be really tough. Because yeah, that Friday's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long day. i got to pace myself, remember? Because Saturday's going to be such a monster. What about your Saturday? What do you got Saturday? Um, I think STS-9 is Saturday late night, and I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to need somebody like you to explain to me what in the hell STS-9 is. Um, okay, so they first played my first year when I was in 2015, and I didn't go see them, Okay, but they're they're kind of just like one of those late night jam bands, you know, with a little electronic influence. And I think they're going to be absolutely prime uh, late night at uh, one of the tents. I forget okay. which one. Well, yeah, it's uh, it's on this tent at one fifteen. When I think of STS Nine, tell me if I'm wrong here, but I think Lasers and Red Rocks. I feel like <laughs> like the only shows they ever do are with Lasers and at Red Rocks. Am I wrong about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I won't lie. I won't lie to you, Brad Steiner. I don't know that much about them. Okay. But yeah, it's one you want to go check out. That. That's the idea. It's a tough pull because it's up against Bon Iver. You're, you're choosing STS9 over Bon Iver. Oh shoot, Bon Iver set. No, I, it's it, it's definitely after that. Okay. All right. I, th- I think they're playing a little bit after Bon Iver, so that's definitely after. Well, Bon Iver is 1225 to 155. STS 9 starts at 115 and goes to 245. So you got a good 45 mm-hmm. minutes. You got 45 minutes to check them out at the rest of the night. I think that's fine to just walk over, dance for 45 minutes. Right. And then, and and then and make your, out. And then make your way to the Robe Rage, which robe is rage. later on the night. I got to yeah. go to this Robe Rage, gotta man. I got to the Robe Rage. I got to remember to pack a robe. <laughs> All right, and then you're wrapping up on Sunday. One of my hardest conflicts is Thundercat against Alt J. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll probably go Alt J. Okay, let me let me tell. I might have told yeah. the story before about Thundercat. Now, Barry, do you know anything about Thundercat? No. This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. He is so earthy and and strange. I was at ACL Fest with an industry guy. He had some women with him, and he wanted to impress them. And these were young 
women who who were they were more wanting like Bruno Mars. Let's be honest, right? And so uh, he goes, <laughs> yeah. "You got to go see Thundercat. We're all going to see Thundercat. Come on!" He brings him to Thundercat. He didn't know who Thundercat was, <laughs> and these two, these three like nineteen year old girls, their jaws dropped watching this old man play jazzy weird sounds with instruments that he's just made up. They were baffled, <laughs> and he looked at, he looked at me, whispered. This is not what I thought it would be. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. He had no idea what to expect. It'd be prepared when you show up to Thundercat to be like, what in the world is going on? I love it. It's so fun. Mm-hmm. It's I love really it. interesting. I'm your biggest fan, but I guess that's just not good enough. Thundercat is the Stop by. We went and saw Bad, Bad, Not Good last Sunday, last year. You know, obviously they're not going to be the exact same set, but I would imagine a similar sort of tone. They were also kind of uh, off kilter, jazz inspired stuff. Right. His latest album, Thundercat, has 25 tracks. He's got 25 tracks on an album. He'll be there for a while. All right? uh, he'll be there for a while. I like it. It's a, it's a great way to finish, man. I can't wait to meet you. Hopefully we uh, we run into each other. Literally, we'll be there next Wednesday, so hopefully we'll see you then. Yeah, I think I'll run by Davey to say hi to you guys. Please do. Yeah, we'd lo- please we'd love come to. come by and say hi. Absolutely. Shake and howdy. And let's be honest, and we want to make this clear, we like Davey, but we think we've oversold him a bit. We may only be there for 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Being honest. <laughs> you, hear, you hear testify and you get out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Please do. Thanks so much, Parker. We'll talk to you then. Thanks, man. All right, see you guys. Man, those are three really good suggestions. I, I like all th- all three of them. They all provided something very, very different than what, what we've been portraying. Absolutely, and I think portraying. it further illustrates the whole reason this idea came up is it's a diverse schedule that yeah. we honestly, you may know more than me, but there were a lot of names I didn't recognize, and so that was the whole idea is... Uh, Let's see what we can discover. I I feel like I feel like I'm going to come back on Monday and I'm going to be beat up. I have yeah. a bad feeling about this year. Yeah, I was thinking about you were talking about uh, them being on the uh, Miller Lite stage. Yeah, Portugal the man. Portugal the man. I think that's what we've emphasized every week is all of these bands start small sometime. And to well, the, unless I, you're Dua Lipa, unless uh, you're Dua they, they Lipa, really start or, that small or, or Bozzy. Right. But the whole idea is. You know, if people have gone multiple times is you get to see an act you didn't hear, you've never heard of on a small stage and then the, you get to f- watch them kind of develop and blow that's up right. or whatever. That's right. And to me, that's a lot of the fun part of this. Well, especially the ones that, that grab you. And he's exactly right. I mean, Portugal was that for me. The shakes were that. Alabama shakes, shakes were that. Courtney Barnett. Courtney I mean, Barnett. That, that afternoon set. Courtney Barnett. Jungle was that a couple of years ago. You feel like you've got something that's just for you. When yeah. you find something like that, and then when Portugal the man blows up like they have in the past year, you're just looking around saying, "Where have you guys been? Yeah, where have you been? Like for instance, Boney Vair, like we talked about this a few weeks ago. Boney Vare, Boney Vare wins Best New Artist. He had already put out two albums. Yeah, you know where have yeah. you guys been on this? And it's a total music snob thing because you get to say, "Yeah, I saw him. Yeah, <laughs> I saw him before they were anybody. Yeah, that's my uh, fifth time. We that. had a there used to be an old music venue in this city called the Bay. And uh, years and years and years before he was anything, Kid Rock played the Bay. Mm -hmm. And it's the running gag in the city that I was at the Kid Rock show. There were seven people there. But everybody in the city was at the Kid Rock show. Chili Peppers, Red Hot Chili Peppers were at a club called The Nucleus years and years ago. Here? Oh, yeah. I've never heard of The Nucleus. Oh, yeah. That was back when I was in college. We're talking 30 years ago. Really? Was our campmate Brian Stone singing into a water bottle? Stone was probably there. I think he was six at the time. (laughs) Uh, but it's the same thing. There were about a dozen of us, and yeah, really? it's like 5,000 people say they were there. I did not know that Yeah, story. yeah. I remember they pulled up in a van. This was uh, the Uplift Mofo Party Plan era. Well, like, for instance, it, the the band that, that is his Portugal demand is My Spoon. I had learned from them from the TV show The O.C., yeah. And I was like, oh man, that's a great song. And I wanted to see them at Bonnaroo. And I, there might have been 100 people at yeah. that Spoon show. And I've talked to Britt Daniel about that. And he said, yeah, nobody knew who we were. We were that's shocked. We, sh- we were shocked anybody showed up at that Bonnaroo show. And now, 15 years later, 12, 13 years later, I'm going around the country following them around. Yeah, you know? that's the best. It is so good. Well, uh, let's let's wrap this up. Um, we had br- we had brought up something in uh, in passing, and Reddit was all about this. And uh, I guess 
We've been proven wrong. I have had this theory that the sets seem shorter this year. When Bozzi gets 30 minutes, or when Anderson Pac only gets an hour 15, or when Muse only gets an hour 15, something doesn't seem right about that. Right. But across the board, if you look at the mid-level, the mid-tier of, of the schedule, they're only getting an hour. I don't know. I didn't go back and look and check this, but that just seems short. Right. I, never, we, I didn't either, but you know, we do this, as we've said many times, because we are fans, but we are also professionals. So I don't after know about we that. Tape you that can, last you can week, claim that that title, man, I not thought, me. Why don't I call somebody who can actually answer this uh-huh. for us? And I called Jeff Quayar at AC Entertainment, and uh, he said, "No, absolutely not. That in fact, some years ago, the bands came to them and said, we don't have enough time to really do what we want to do. So the push was to find ways to make the sets as long as they needed to be. And he said that absolutely has not changed. Mm. And I said, well, is it maybe because it used to be jam band? and they tend to want to go longer and now you're booking more pop or whatever. And he said, no, there's just not been a change. So mm-hmm. I don't know if it's us, us being Reddit, us being fans who are looking for something, right. which which we want to do. Yeah, we do. We are want to do that. Yeah. But he said, no, nothing is has changed at all. Yeah, I mean, the, my first reaction to that would be, well, I mean, are there are there less artists playing? Because they feel like there's more gaps in the schedule than before. And I think that somebody fact-checked that a while back and said, no, they're yeah. essentially the I same even amount asked, of artists. Um, I, I asked specifically, with all of the emphasis on the activities in camps, is it you know, that you've scheduled in some open time for people to do that. And and he said, no. In fact, this was interesting. He said they know that 20% of the people who go hang out at camp, except for the two or three main headlines. So, Wait, say that again. Yeah. I, I'm confused. So, except for the headline. Okay. When they're performing, about 20% of the attendees stay back at camp. Okay, so, and, if and I go to any, so if I go to any show, there's a good chance that 20% of the population is not even in center room. Yep, yeah, according to their that actually their That's actually lower than I thought it would be. At any given time, I would probably say 50-50. At any given time, yeah. yeah. The Saturday night is always, I mean, it feels like everybody. It feels like all of Tennessee is right. in center room on Saturday night. But the last couple of years, it seemed like Thursday has been pretty crowded because Man. everybody is so excited to get it going. There was a time when Thursday, it was just us. Exactly. Yeah, I, mean, I felt as though that we owned the place. We could yeah. have walked onto any stage we wanted to and, and played a few songs Abs- if we wanted absolutely. to. Now it is slammed. Yeah, and absolutely it's because slammed. people start getting there earlier and earlier. You remember it was 2 a.m. 2 on Thursday was open time, and now the Manchester and the state police have said, let's get them in there. We don't have to deal with them. Right. So well, they've opened the gates earlier and well, earlier. Well, I can't. I'm, I'm literally gnawing at the bit. Yeah, I I'm am ready. so damn excited about this year. And we, we're so damn excited that you found this podcast and, and you have enjoyed it and been a part of our little Bonnaroo ride. Uh, this is essentially what we do when we're not doing a podcast. And in the weeks that lead up to Bonnaroo, this is what we talk about. This is what we do. And uh, we're glad to be able to share the conversation with you. And I hope to God that you uh, join us for the uh, first 15 minutes of Davey. <laughs> we'll yeah. be there at some point. And maybe if, uh, if uh, we can make it work. We'll swing around and try to meet everybody before that. If you want to share something with us, write it on the website, thewhatpodcast.com, and we'll try to uh, connect with anybody that wants to see a show or two with us, thewhatpodcast.com, or follow us along at Twitter, at the what underscore podcast. We're going to pretty much do mo- most of our updates through there, so follow us, DM us, and we'll try to connect at some point uh, before Davey, because Davey's, what, Sunday? So I, mean, I think it's Saturday, because okay. we don't want to wait that long, right? All right. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'd love to, uh, love to meet yeah, you. Say hi. And and uh, say thank you for enjoying the podcast and, and being part of our Bonnaroo experience. I guess that's it. I guess we yeah. say goodbye to our Bonnaroo 2018 world. I don't know when we'll follow up. We'll have to figure that out. But I Oh, man, I'm going to be beat for a while. I know, right? We'll, I want to uh, do it fast, and I'd like to get some people on the air to, uh, to talk about it. In fact, if, if we run into you at the, uh, at the festival, maybe we'll record and, and, and talk to you about your, your weekend and get some stories from Absolutely. It. That's what I want. Some of the stories, the best things you've seen, the funniest things you've seen, the best things you've eaten, whatever. Yeah. It's, and uh, if anybody, I, I swear to you, I will give you $100 to anybody that finds Barry Corder with painted boobs. <laughs> that is my promise to you. I'll give you $100 to not find them. <laughs> That's the one podcast. We'll see you on the farm. Peace. Hey, 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 hey. How y'all feeling? Journey through the stories that define the artists playing Bonnaroo. Who are they? What are they? What will you see? The what? Which bands? This year? That matter. Yay. With Brad Steiner and Barry Corder.